Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. If you have your Bibles ready, today we'll be in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11 as we continue our Advent series from the cradle to the cross to the crown. Today our title is Christ Humbled Himself and Was Born in the Likeness of of man. Christ humbled himself and was born in the likeness of man. Here is the first half of this two-part study. Um, and so last week we were in um, looking at Christ through the Old Testament. We used the verse where Jesus spoke to his disciples and told them, I'm going to show you where I was in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms and how the birth was prophesied and fulfilled some 700 years before that and we talked about the 400 years of silence before that and 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 how those 135 prophecies that were fulfilled in daniel chapter 11 alone as god was preparing the way for his son to come into the uh, to the earth to be born here and i pray that as we look at this that we would understand that we need to slow down the the retail side of christmas it gets busy you have parties you have things that you have that are going on and and what happens is we we get so focused on that that we forget the purpose of christmas the purpose of christmas is to celebrate the birth of christ the purpose of christmas is not just that you're in the presence of god just during christmas but that should be as a follower of Christ, that should be every day. Every day you should seek to be in His presence. The birth of Christ is not for, for presence. And I'm sure all of us have something that we want. A new tool or something, right? That we have our eye on. But it's to be in the presence of God. That's what it's about. So as the busyness gets ramped up as we enter the last week of shopping, Right? And you see people scrambling with their heads cut off, just lost. When you're calmly in the store, picking up something, tell them about Jesus. Because that's what they need. Because I used to be one of those same people that was scrambling during Christmas time before Christ. And the stress of it. And, oh, don't use that credit card. It's like playing Vegas. You're pulling cards out. It's like, well, let's see if there's anything left on it. Go for it. That was before Christ. Now, I'm not stressed out at all. I, I'm not worried about it. And, and that's, at the end of the day, it's like, because it's not, that's not what it's about. It's about Christ. It's about the Savior being born. And that's what we'll see here as we look at our first point. It says, have this mind among your, yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So the first thing that he tells you is like, this is the mind of Christ. People will ask, what is the will of God for your life this is it in these verses it's covered that you are to be humble that you are to be obedient and that you are to be a servant to others because that's what Christ was and we'll see that as we dive into these scriptures is having the mind of Christ is to be able to do those three things and and to understand like you're the least you're the least because you're the servant it's not so important that you get your way. And, and so we'll, we'll look at all of that as we dive into this. It says, Who though he was in the form of God did not count it equality with God a thing to be grasped. We have the, 
the attitude we have, the form of God, and, and the unchanging and internal outward expression of an inward change, or you have Christ who is equal with God. That's what Paul is saying. Like He is in the form of God. He is God the, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Equally, fully God, fully man. Truly God, truly man. And he's, he's going to give up that position to be obedient to the Father and do what he's been called to do. In John chapter 8, verse 58, it says that Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus has always existed. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, as we find the Word became flesh, it says, In the beginning was the Word. Now, if you talk to somebody who's Jehovah Witnesses, they have rewritten the Bible. They added a word, which is wrong. It tells you not to add to or take away from, so just FYI, somebody's going to pay for that one. And they're leading a lot of people astray. The word. That's a very important the, right? There ain't no other word. He's the word. The word that will go on forever. The Logos, Jesus Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. The Word of God, the Word created all things, material and immaterial. And it's, it's Jesus Christ who stands outside of time, who's, who's, who's the creator, the direct agent of the creator. As God speaks, the word goes out. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Christ created all things, but yet He Himself is uncreated. That includes all heaven and earth, invisible and invisible all things are under his command. That's why you remember in that, that verse when he, he says, Tell them to stop worshiping you. If I tell them, even the rocks will cry out. And we forget that. That Jesus Christ, the invisible God, is revealed perfectly. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it tells us why he came and the mission that he was on. It says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. We learned that this past week as we were in the, uh, the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth and Mary. There's a purpose for him coming. There's a purpose for the birth, but if we, don't, if we don't have the birth, we don't have the cross, right? If he's just born, we still need him to go to the cross. We still need him to be resurrected, in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, this is a great verse. It says, Long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He created the world. He, it is, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Again, the word, right? Of his power after making purifications for what? Sins. And he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus abandons his sovereign position, leaves heaven on a rescue mission for sinners. For all of us. Being born lowlier than angels. And putting on this flesh. And it says, Although he was in the form of God, did not count it equality with God, a thing to be grasped. That word to be grasped is to cling on, to hang to, or, or to want to uh, keep the authority and the privileges of the deity. But he let that go. Even though he was fully God, fully man. At any moment on the cross, he could have said, Enough! Call a legion of angels down. We're done. But he didn't do that. Because he was being obedient to who? The Father. He didn't cling to it. See, what are you clinging to this year? What are you not letting go of and giving to God? 
See, Jesus, he just let that go. He didn't cling to it. But what are you clinging to? What are you hanging on to? What is it that's got you going in circles this Christmas? What are you not giving over to God? See, Christ thought of others, not himself. Not like the first Adam. The first Adam thought, of, hey, I can be like God. Let me take some of that fruit. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 47, it says, The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. And he lets go. He wasn't clinging to it. We cling to many things during the holiday, right? We do. We do. And, and, and sometimes, I don't know what it is, we think... Well, if I just get this one thing, it's going to fix everything. Like you, there, let me just, so if you don't know this, I'm going to go ahead and, and just, because I've tried all of this, it doesn't work. I'm going to give you the before Christ, Mike. If you buy a present thinking that's going to, it's going to fix the year's worth of problems for your marriage, you're laughing. It's a joke. It ain't going to fix it. By January 1st or 2nd or 3rd, when life picks back up and the schedules start going again, that present that you bought on Christmas ain't going to mean nothing. And that's for your kids, too. If you think that you're going to buy a present to fix the way that you behaved as a mother or a father for the year, and you think that's going to fix it, it ain't. It ain't. That's not how this works. That's how the world works. But see, that's how our minds are. We think that, oh, well, if I just buy this, it'll make up for the time that I didn't spend. If I, if I just buy this, it'll make up for my behavior. You'll be good to go January 20th, or you'll be December 25th. Kids are still playing with the toys. December 26th, kids are still playing with the toys. December 27th, toys are all over the living room and you're getting tired of it. December 28th, you're starting to step on stuff and getting mad. December 29th, put them all in a bin and stick them in the garage. And you just wasted how much money? Now, I'm not trying to be a Scrooge. But what are you clinging to this Christmas? Because your kids need, I, I can tell you, the average time that a father spends with the child is 20, 26 to 28 minutes a day. That's it. That's it. They need your time. They need your time. Buy something that you can do with them together. Don't buy a phone and just hand it to them. Buy something that you can do together. You know what? The greatest thing that, that we saw on our, our Christmas list, and it, I, I just told my wife it made me so happy because it makes, it makes me understand the time that she spends with my granddaughters. You know what they wanted? Crafts. Things that they could paint. Things that they could draw. Things that they could color with their grandmother. They didn't ask for toys. They asked for crafts. That's because grandma's invested that time in them. Physically. Physically. So what are we clinging to this Christmas? Are you clinging to a relationship? Well, I think, I, man, I got, I got a daughter that thinks that a relationship's going to fix everything. See, pastors, say, hey, I got five kids, man. I get one on a wave going good, then the other four are doing all right, one of them crashes. And then as a pastor, you get them back up on the wave, and then by the time you get that child going good, now, I understand all my kids are adults, so it doesn't stop just because you're a grandmother or a grandfather. You, keep, you, don't, you don't stop being a parent until you go home to be with the Lord, or they go home to be with the Lord. But it seems like every time you get one doing well, they crash. And so I have my daughter, she's clinging to a relationship this Christmas, to the point where I'm worried about, is this going to become an ungodly thing? That was not an easy conversation to have, but I had it. Because I care about her. Wants to go to Colorado. I was like, man, I had, me and Steve may have to go on a rescue mission to go pick her up if things go bad. I was like, what's going on? But see, that's again, what do we do? We pray. We pray. We get on our knees and we pray. Lord, shut it down. If you got to break the car, break the car. I don't care. If all four tires got to go flat, let them go flat. If he has to be removed out of her life completely, Goodbye. If he's not there for godly reasons, if you got to take him home early, Lord. If you need me to take him home early, Lord. No. Right? And it's, it's crazy because as, as fathers, we're still, those are our daughters still. 
Right, all you hear all the dads, yeah. Time to polish the gun. Let's get the uh, oil out and make sure it's ready to go. But what we see here is that, you know, he let go. He, he wasn't clinging to it. And I love what it says in verse 7, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of man. Again, he leaves the glory of heaven as born on the earth. And is he born to great circumstances, to a rich family? No. He's born to a carpenter's. He's a carpenter. His dad's a carpenter. And, and, and they don't come from, from wealth. He's born in a manger. We know that the prophecy of him eating, what is it, locusts and honey? Or eating uh, that, that prophecy that's there. It's, it's the diet of the poor. He, he comes as a servant. He comes in, in, in humble settings. But one of the beauties is that he comes in a human body, and yet he is sinless. Sinless. And I, I, you know, I, it, I, I can't wrap my head around that sometimes, because I think just Jesus as a child, and we don't have much on that, right? But I'm just thinking as a child, just think how much trouble you got into as a child. But Jesus was sinless. You probably, they were probably like, you need to be more like Jesus. And the brothers are like, <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. But he's born in this physical body. And these bodies that are deteriorating and falling apart. These bodies that can have illness and sin everywhere. And yet, it's the same body that he is as a servant. That he uses to become a servant. It's the same body that he uses as he goes to the cross. It's the same body that will be scourged and crucified. But yet he was willing to die. In John 17, 5 it says, And now, Father, glorify me in your own, in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. He gave up his honor in Isaiah 53 and he gave up his riches in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he, is ri he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And through that he also gave up his relationship with the Father. Right? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He has to take the sin upon him and be separated from the Father. He gave all that up for us so that you could be saved from your sin. Came as a servant. And the word servant is doulos. It's a bond servant. It's where we get the word slave. We are to be a slave for Christ. And John 13 verses 14 through 17 says, If then you are Lord and teacher have have washed your feet, you also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who has sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. We know in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Unfortunately, a lot of people in the church today change that because they say, you know what? I am here to be served. I'm not here to serve. I have the title now. I'm not here to serve. We have all been called to be servants. If you are to have the mind of Christ, you need to be serving others. And what a greater time to be serving others than during Christmas. But guess what? You're supposed to be doing that all the time. It's not just during Christmas. In Mark chapter 15, verses 40 through 41, it says, There was also a woman looking on afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the less, of, of, uh, the less and of Hosea and Salome, who was also followed him and ministered to him when he, when he was in Galilee and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Even... During the moment of his crucifixion and preparation for the burial, the women never left Jesus and continued to serve Jesus even to the burial. Nicodemus and Barnabas show up. They're there to serve. 
They were dedicated. They brought spices. They, they were there to serve. See, for us, for Christmas, we should be serving others. They need people to ring the bell for Salvation Army. I don't agree with everything Salvation Army believes in now. They become woke. But I can tell you that every penny that's from that Walmart goes to this community. I know that because I'm in the meetings. Every penny. And they quietly pay for people's electric and water so it doesn't get shut off in this community. But see, you didn't know that, did you? But they don't have enough people to ring the bell this year. And, and they need people to do it. Last year we did Christmas presents for the kindergartners. We did over 100 presents for the kindergartners here at Divine uh, ISD. For those that would not have anything to open on, on Christmas. Those kids. Think about somebody besides yourself for Christmas. About serving someone else. I want to thank the ladies. Uh, Jacob got to come to the men's last yesterday. Last, I'm trying to remember where I'm at. Yesterday. Uh, so Jacob was there with the men's. We got to hang out. And have fellowship. It was a great time. But we got to give Jasmine his wife. Who is going to be having a baby soon. The gift basket. And everything that y'all put together for her. And guess what. I think they're coming next week. We're happy because she's had a very difficult pregnancy. She's in the, she's in the last stretch. And any. Now I, men can't speak on this. But I can speak on. I know that last month is the hardest. You can't find a position where you're comfortable. It's, you're always in pain. It's tough. And so y'all need to keep praying for her. Baby's coming. We're going to celebrate that. We're, we're excited about that. But we need to be thinking about others. Others. Right? It's so easy to think about ourselves. It's a very narcissistic view. And that wasn't Jesus. Jesus was always thinking about others. And we need to be doing the same. I love what it says in Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 through 40. It says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. You know, whatever we can do to help, that's what we should be doing this Christmas. But there's going to be something else if you read the rest of that verse down in verse 37. It says, then, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? Or when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of my one of the least of these of these, my brothers, you did it to me. It's like the opportunity is there for you to serve. You need to ask the question, am I going to do it? You want joy in your life? Jesus, others, you. You come last. That's not what this, this culture wants, right? We have to be an example, a light that's different than what this culture is. We have to serve others. When we see a Savior obediently go into the cross in verse 8. It says, and being found... In human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So he was born and, and humbled himself. That's the second point, is humility. You want to have the mind of Christ for Christmas? You need to have humility. You need to be humble. He humbled himself. We talked about it. How did he humble himself? He washed the feet of the twelve disciples. The lowliest job in the house, he did it. So he's like, hey, bathrooms need to be clean. I clean the bathrooms every day and take out the trash at the school. Nobody asked me to do that. Why do I do that? Because I, it, it's you need to have your hand in the toilet. But you're the pastor. Doesn't matter. You're the least. If you're the father, you're the least. If you're the husband... You're the least. You are the head of the house, but you are the servant. You're the least. you got to think of others. That's what Joseph did when he found out Mary was pregnant. He, want, he wanted to put her away quietly, humbly putting her away. Because otherwise, she would have been stoned to death. Pridefully, mad you think about it today. It'd show up on TikTok. Can you believe they have the thing out? Mary, she's pregnant. 
It'd be on TikTok. Pridefully, that's how it would be. But he secretly wanted to put her away. See, we have to have the mind of Christ, which is to wash the feet and 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 to understand. Like he has the humility and and the beauty of knowing that like Christ gets hungry. And yet he created everything. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us or find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio, pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light and you'll find it. 